Everybody, welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Squad, joined by Rachel Howie. Hello. And Ben Roy. Hello. Turner, rather. Ben Roy. <laughs> and Josh Brown. Hiya. And I'm Scott Taylor. I thought we would do a big old blind ranking of the best games of the year. So, everybody on the gaming team uh, was allowed to pick from 20 overall candidates. Whatever you put at number one was 20 points. And then everybody submitted everything to me. So only I know what the real top 10 is, which is what I hold in my hand right oh, now. Oh, I'm quivering with anticipation. It's, there's some surprises, let's say. <laughs> some people went, went rogue and voted for some things. I'm going to mention some honorable mentions some things that only a couple of us voted for that did get them in there, but then once I started adding everything back up, that stuff got kicked out. So, the honourable mentions are Mortal Kombat 11, which only I care about in this I world. Played it. You played a little yeah. bit of it, but it wasn't high enough, was it, Ben Roy? Yeah. Um, mine was Mortal Kombat 11. The next one down was Metro Exodus, another solid game. Oh, I couldn't, was. I couldn't break believe... the top ten. Well, Josh and Ben Roy tried. Where did you have it on your list? I had it quite high. Mine was like well, seven, eight. Six. <laughs> it's civil. Tried, tried a little bit, but it could have been higher. Democracy. But another thing that uh, tried and failed was Gears 5. Ben uh. Roy and Josh forming a coalition to get Gears 5 into the top ten. Didn't happen. Fourth best game of the year. Not even remotely true, but it, you know, we tried. Uh, last thing, which is a bit heartbreaking, was Pokemon Sword I can't and believe, Shield. Have any of you even played Pokemon? Yes, it's really good, uh. but it's Let's Go's better, Rach. I would have uh. Whoa! Yeah! No, yeah. it is not. Yeah, yeah. This is a thing for a chatty face in the future. Digimon for life. No, no Yu-Gi-Oh, but uh, for now, only I... Rach and Rich voted Pokemon, you guys voted Gears, I voted Mortal Kombat or whatever. Everything else, once it was added up, gave us a top 10. So, we're gonna go in reverse order, 10 down to one, and number 10 was Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, interesting, So Scott. I thought that was a pretty Ooh, good number 10. That's quite a good number 10. It's only because I know what the honorable mentions are. Yes. And Call of Duty Modern Warfare for me was a great game. It still is a great game, I still play it a lot. I think they packed so much goodness into that. Mm. The amount of content in that game is insane. You've got the campaign, you've got spec ops, you've got multiplayer, but in multiplayer you've got gunfight, you've got ground war, you've got the regular maps, mm -hmm. and it's all really good. But is it better than Gears 5? Is it better than Metro Exodus? No, okay, we're is not going to have, is it better Pokemon? than... <laughs> we're not going to no. have, is it better than the honourable mentions, every single one of these? Because the answer will be no, because Mortal Kombat 11 was in the in honourable right, mentions. Okay, to fair. me, it, that smells like an honourable mentions game. <laughs> I'll just say, it just, it just smells like honour... Yeah, but these days, come on. Smells you, wanted Gear, you had Gears 5 at like number three. Fourth best game of the year. Though. Insane. Um, but yeah, in terms of COD, um, that was voted up um, by pretty much everybody who put it in a roundabout sort of five to six, um, cumulatively allowed it to sort of be you know, in the top ten. Um, for me, I think that the campaign is a little bit naff. It's only about three to four hours long, but I love the multiplayer. I've been playing that pretty much every day. Um, and for everyone else who's played it, it seems like this is the one where they finally got it right. Like after so many weird experiments with future stuff and spaceships and Kit Harrington, and now it's gone back to being normal again. Well, that's it, because every single <laughs> Call of Duty, when it comes out, we always say, it's back to form, it's, this is the one, you've got to play this one, and then everyone <laughs> drops off after about a month. But this one, that mm -hmm. hasn't happened, at least yet, and I'm still interested to see what they're going to add. All the DLC is free, mm -hmm. that kicks off December 3rd, mm -hmm. and I'm going to jump back in and play those old maps and play the new game modes. I think it's going to be really fun. It's a beautiful thing, and um, I will reiterate as well that we have a whole bunch of Game of the Year stuff coming overall. We have a chatty face thing going live on Friday, we have a whole bunch of different podcasts breaking stuff down, um, but there was no way to get everybody on this tiny table, and this is this I mean, we're people. barely managing we're, this. Yeah, yeah, we're barely in, but we were the people who played the most stuff overall this year, so you're looking at the, the elite right now. The <laughs> wow. Top, wow. The royal four, you might say. I said say. about you, Josh, though. You said about the, the whole news cycle. I'm looking forward to when they go, is Call of Duty dead again? Uh, when we get that about, you know, July. <laughs> but yeah, Ben Wright, it's like about a month before the next one's announced, that'll be the thing. It'll yeah. be like, oh, was it really good? And yeah. go, no. <laughs> but the next one might be. You never know. It goes back to World War, it might be. Right, number nine. Number nine was Untitled Goose Game. Oh, wow, why, why is that so low? <laughs> low? Low? Why that should not have been in the oh top my God. ten. Untitled, Untitled Goose Game rocked the world. It <laughs> shook the world of gaming, I tell you what. It was just this brilliant tiny little package of honk, and I loved it, you loved it, we all loved it, apart from Ben Roy, apparently. Ben Roy barely got the tutorial. I shelved it. <laughs> You couldn't. You could, how oh far did you get? Oh my god. We're not, are we going to have this how far do you get No, every no, time? I just want to know how much of the Goose Game uh, I played the intro bit and I thought it to be a bit tedious and infuriating and I was ready to go back to Mario Maker on my Switch. You didn't think it was basically Hitman but with Goose? Oh, but I would have played more Hitman if I wanted to play Hitman mm. as a thing. The thing is, like, they, they did more, because everyone thought it was just going to be this kind of one-dimensional banter game, kind of like uh, Goat Simulator. But, like, for me, the thing that I genuinely love about Goose Game, it didn't make my top 20, it was an honourable mention. Um, but I think that, like you said, the thing that they do, it's like, you can experiment with AI patterns and just have fun with, like, general sort of tomfoolery, and you know, I kick this bucket onto a dude's head and make this guy fall over into a bunch of tomatoes and yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's a puzzle game. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like a puzzle game, and it kind of has that sort of, like, sardonic, like, core that Hitman does, um, which I think elevates it, because, like, I 
forget exactly how many people had it in their uh, top. It was in the, the lot of people's top eights. Um, your rate to use yours was pretty high. Rich yeah. was pretty high. I think Osley had it pretty high, um, which like, resulted in it being I'll, higher than we might assume. I will say, I'm probably being a bit harsh on it, but it got memed to hell, and mm. I was ready just to not see a goose meme after about two days. <laughs> there wasn't a, a ridiculous amount of, of goose gamage across the internet. Josh, did you, did you have a bit of I didn't goose? get a chance to play it because I'm saving it for a Christmas game when I'm off work and I get the chance goose. to play it then, cause some mischief. But, Good. you know, I didn't vote for it, obviously, because I didn't mm -hmm. get a chance to play it. But I think its memeable quality is actually, it's its a huge pro. So many people who don't even play games were so interested in this little goose. You and Patterson <laughs> dressed up as the goose for Halloween. This had a cross-media pull to he it. Hasn't even everyone, got a switch. He hasn't even got a Switch, but everyone seemed to enjoy it as a game as well. It wasn't just, you know, a joke. It was an actual game at the heart mm -hmm. of it. Because that's what I was worried about. I remember before it came out, a lot of people were talking about it. You, you guys in the office. Actually, no, I and I this. didn't believe I thought it was just going to be a joke. I didn't realise there, there was a game behind it. I thought it was going to be Goat Simulator. <laughs> but it turns out that it's not. It actually is the ninth best game of the year. <laughs> Officially, objectively, Untitled Goose Game is yep. the ninth best game of the year. Number eight is Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, okay. oh. which is surprisingly so, low, maybe. Unfortunately, I haven't played this one yet. This okay. is my Christmas game, so that's maybe why it's so low, because I wasn't able to give it any points. Ah. But I hear really good things. Yes, the, I think that most of us who have gone through it have, like, have come away mostly positive, but acknowledging some things, like how much it is a Souls clone, um, or how some of the enemies sort of rely on a lot of chip damage and cheap stuff, which Mr. Benroy loves <laughs> a bit. It, of, he, he loves a bit of Sekiro. <laughs> so anything like that's going to get The him. The whole low your dead genre is great to me a bit. The low your dead genre. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I think I was pretty done with it after Bloodborne. By the way, I got a platinum in Bloodborne, so don't come at me. I know about these games, and this is just. Not Sekiro, though. It's, I, what is that Mandalorian? Not Mandalorian. What is the guy in Dathmere just doing the whole time, just waiting for, to poke you when he comes? There are a the lot corner. of people around corners. Yeah, yeah poke around uh, the corner. That's one of the worst things that a lot of devs learned from Souls was like, oh, okay, challenge is cheapness, and then they just they do it the wrong way around. Yeah, and they've kind of done it. I feel like they did it wrong here, but mm. and also the Star Wars nerd in me, like. The lightsaber is not a lightsaber in this game. It might, might as well be just a glow stick. Because if, you hit, if I hit a rat and it doesn't die instantly, what's the point? Get the damage upgrade, man. Oh, I did. Yeah, did, did you though? I was going through getting the pattern the other day and I'm still hitting things with full damage and it's not dying in one hit. You're not wrong. I do love that. This is the same if you go back for our 2018 game of the year and 2016 game of the year. I don't think we did one for 2016 rather or whatever. If you go back the last couple of years, we <laughs> tend to be like, this is a big celebration of what everyone loved. And then we just spend most of the time going, well, that's not what I would have put at number three. That's not what I would have put at number two. I, was, so, I, was spent the I love the first half of this video just in disbelief. <laughs> I was just staring at the camera. <laughs> And I'm looking at you guys, and I'm thinking, this is my third one of these. Yeah, it is. <laughs> every year, I continue to be disappointed. Well, you could, have, you could have spent your points on something other than Gears 5, Josh, <laughs> hey. but you didn't do it, did you? I think Jedi Fallen Order, this is about right. I think I had uh, it about 8, 9, or 10 right. for me. It was that upper end of it, because it is, I really love it as mm -hmm. a Star Wars fan as well. Like, when I first put it on with no expectations of this game, it blew me away. I think right. I even took a screenshot, which I never do. <laughs> I'm never going to look at it again. I just thought, I need to, you know, capture, immortalize, immortalize this feeling that I've got. Mm -hmm. I do think it's sort of perhaps outstays its welcome a little bit in mm -hmm. the final hours, but it starts so well, it feels good, and it just looks awesome, and it's 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 very solid, and I want another one. Yeah, I think if we're going to just do a lot of positives, it opens so well, it ends extremely well. There's a whole weird chunk of Soulsian copying in the more, in the middle that's what makes it drag a little bit, but there is. It, 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 there is. But there's an overall feeling of positivity that I think obviously resulted in a whole bunch of us putting that it's somewhere in the top ten. Um, speaking of disbelief, uh, number seven, Planet Zoo. Oh, oh. that's great. Planet Zoo is apparently phenomenal. Now, this got into the position that it's in because of Rach, Osley, and Rich. It was Rich and Osley's number one, which gave it 20 points Ooh. each. I know. And then, uh, Rach, you put it in your top ten as well. So Collision. please tell us about this amazing PC Oh, thing. well, Planet Zoo is just it's <laughs> the same guys that made Planet Coaster, but it feels like more in the line of Zoo Tycoon than Planet Coaster, because Coaster for me, it was always so like overwhelming, mm. too complicated. It took seven hours to make anything, mm -hmm. and it just didn't didn't really push my buttons. But with Planet Zoo, it's got animals, it's easier to understand, you can care for them. Like, um, I'll say this on behalf of Osley, because I know how much he loves, like when, you, when you've cared for an animal enough, mm -hmm. and it's sort of healthy, and it's fit, and it's done its bit, you can release it into the wild, and it's just the most wholesome thing. Do you get a cutscene for that? Like a little <laughs> sort of like um, go forth Small, no, like just you get like a little, you get like a little notification. Okay, that's but like you no. Know. It's just as far as a simulation game goes, it's like it is running your own zoo, and what's not to love? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, does it like because the thing with that is that Rich and O's have talked loads about just being addicted to it all year long. Does it just have a bunch of systems that it just works in some way to bring you back like every day or whatever? Uh, 
it's just Checking like well, in the same way of Planet Coaster, where it just takes forever to do anything. Right. <laughs> so yeah, you're kind of like um, I think Rich's metrics are like he's like, oh, I've played thirty hours and I've made two enclosures. Yeah. So he said he spent like four hours designing a snake enclosure, <laughs> but it must be an extremely good snake enclosure. I've only, I don't know. I've only been doing the like preset scenarios, like the the zoo's already made for me, and I'm just, right. I'm just mucking out the poop and stuff. Like <laughs> that's all I'm doing. But um, no, Rich is very creative, and I think for a creative person to mm -hmm. like make your zoo from scratch, it's just like that kind of level of like spending forever on it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really really good. I want to know whether you can get a sloth. And there are no sloths. What yet. the hell? But DLC. Good, okay, because that but the Maybe. sloth DLC might turn because apparently it's coming to consoles next year, 2020. Um, so everyone on PS4 and whatever can find out what the hell the big deal is. So it'll be game of the year 2020. That's then. when it's actually going to matter. Surely. But you can't you can't snob but, a PC lot anymore. So you know, Hollow Knight came out in 2017, but we class it as the 2018 game, <laughs> depending on when it came out. And number six is Devil May Cry 5, which was my number one. And um, if I was going to be completely subjective, uh, but I think DMC5 is just the best action game ever made, probably. You know what? You might you might be right yeah. there, Scott. I haven't played as many as you, and I hadn't uh, enjoyed the DMC franchise as much as you had until very recently. You checked them all out. I played them all in a row, uh -huh. and even then, even then, I was not fatigued by the time I got to five because it was just for me head and shoulders in terms of presentation, in terms of actual game feel, mm. above all the other ones. For me, it's between that and Devil May Cry 3 for my favourite one yeah. in the franchise. But this, like the, the split between each character, I thought that might have gotten a, a little bit annoying, mm -hmm. but they were so distinct and unique that I kind of wanted to go back through the game again to play the moments where you did get to choose and mm -hmm. like choose someone else and yeah. like level their, mm -hmm. you know, abilities up and stuff. And it was it was so mad and so imaginative <laughs> and so beautiful. And I just wanted to, I wanted to drink it up. I wanted to be the guy from There Will Be Blood and put my little straw in the milkshake <laughs> and just <laughs> give me the good stuff. That's that's what playing DMC5 feels like, but it doesn't stop for like 30 hours. Yeah. And it's just amazing. Rach, we played it on stream for a couple hours and you were a big fan. And I think like the way that it just looks and the way that you can just like leap into it and do all these ridiculous over the top combos and stuff. That's what the series has always been known for, but I think 5 does it better than any of the rest of them. Ben, why did you play I'm, a little bit? I'm going to drink Josh's milkshake. Good. Here, <laughs> because I feel exactly the same about this game. I'm kind of like a casual fan of this franchise. Mm -hmm. And it was always like back in the day when you go to your friend's house and play a game. I never like owned these games, but I played right. them with friends and I played for a friend's house. But pr praise Game Pass, praise Game Pass, thank <laughs> you, because I don't know if I'd have bought this otherwise. Lord Spencer. And I am very glad that I got this one, mm -hmm. because I just loved bashing things about. I thought this is what this is almost what Jedi Fallen Order should have been. To be, yeah, to be entirely honest. that was one of the weird things playing Fallen Order, but like, like, because it is so like it reminded me of the Force Unleashed games and like more over the top character action stuff. And then like Fallen Order is so Soulsian that it really stretches out the reward loop and stuff like that. Um, whereas like DMC is just kind of like here you go, just play as Nero. You can cut everything in half. Your gun, yeah. your arm is actually a gun. Plus you can ride on it if you want. And it's like that RE it's engine nuts. looks fantastic. Yeah. And V, V's my boy. I was V oh. as much as V is Kylo Ren. Yeah. But Sure. V has come to Oh my to. god. Yes. <laughs> all I'm saying is they're all sexy boys, you know what I mean? Yes. They're all sexy boys, they're all sexy people. Dante is number one. Dante is, oh, is he though? Yeah. Dante Rose is Dante. Yes. Dante is Dante. I mean, he, yeah. he, he does look like he's getting on a bit now. He looks a bit like Kurt Cobain. Oh, but, but that's he's better for me. Good though. That's better, yeah. 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 But I mean, considering that, um, you know, DMC4 was like 2008 and they had that weird reboot in 2013 and it was like, okay, are we ever going to get like traditional DMC again? Um, this was the one where they just kind of went all the way back to that like DMC4 and was like, okay, let's just forget 2013 even happened and let's just carry on as if we were supposed to before um, and yeah I think the way that they brought it together like uh, Ben Roy said with the RE engine which I found out stands for reach for the sky engine. <laughs> I thought it was Resident Evil but no it's the reach for the sky engine ah it's Resident Evil that's it okay. might as well be yeah. um, but that thing is a, an absolute technical showpiece if you want to check it out on Pro Xbox One X or whatever um, number five is Control Almost. Which is going to be gutting for these two, maybe, because you guys had it at number one. Well, you didn't. You I dropped didn't it. have it at number you one. You dropped it. I, I was at number. Mine was at number two. It was number one for most, most of the. the yeah, yeah. Well, Resident Evil Two was kind of, but Control. Oh my God, Remedy is just so back. I couldn't believe playing this game. Mm -hmm. The more and more it went on, from going into the FBC straight away and it all being creepy and mysterious and reading like, you can't take this with you, you can't take this with you. You're just like, I'm in the Remedy world again. And you go through <laughs> and you just get lured in by these mysteriously weird characters. Mm -hmm. The game at times looks gorgeous with the lighting and I just found the combat, like, if I can play a game and I can play the game with the first weapon that I get mm -hmm. and I just don't have to change to anything. I'm, I'm not lazy, but I kind of like that because I, I like to play the character more mm -hmm. than I use things and just using that same pistol all the way through and then learning the abilities like to fly to throw stuff by the way throwing stuff this was a true <laughs> jello fantasy here and i will keep no. gushing i'll keep gushing so i'm gonna let someone else talk about this but 
almost my game. Though, yeah. You're a big fan. I think the um, the thing with the powers that Ben always mentioned is all the physics based stuff, which means you can just like hold a button and just grab anything from a piece of concrete off, concrete off the wall um, to vending machines and pieces of office equipment and whatever. Um, which reminded me of an old PS2 game called PsyOps, where yes. you just anything that was physics based and just lobbing everything at evil people oh, all yeah. day long. It's so good, Rage. Oh my god, I need to play this game. Honestly. You do, man. I need to play it. it I know I will like it. Uh -huh. It's just oh, Death Stranding. The thing is, oh. the, the control is immaculate. The world that they build, the whole, like Ben said, the FBC is the Federal Bureau of Control. The whole point of that game is that you start out as this character called Jesse Faden who just arrives and I think we'll just stay away from spoilers but the whole the best thing about it is that you arrive at this weird mysterious government facility and no one's there and then it, you kind of just play through from there and find out what they were into and there's a lot of men in black stuff going on this weird supernatural stuff um, but that stuff is done so well and then the combat itself is also snappy you, as hell. You two are playing on a PS4 Pro right? Yeah. It's, so it's yeah. a testament to me like this ran like Dog on an Initial, original yeah, PS4. Yeah, they patched it quite a lot now. My PS4 was floating in the air like this. <laughs> and I would get, I'd find myself getting used to it. I knew when things were going to hit. Because as soon as you throw a rock into one guy, he flies into a table and that all breaks and the PS4 goes... Yeah. And it's just like... Jeez. When it works though, like on the on the get higher PC, end stuff, <laughs> Yeah, the thing is on PC, like they actually put ray tracing in it, which apparently is one of the first games to do it on this level or whatever. Um, don't know, I'm a console boy. But it's something to do with reflections in the windows. And um, <laughs> <laughs> my point is that um, Control has yeah. like all these new age things like ray tracing, like all these different um, particle effects, and like you said, like the destruction of like tables and splinters and wood and whatever. So when you're flinging dudes through everything, it looks spectacular. Yeah, um, man. And one other thing, the the teasers of Alan Wake in this. Oh, <laughs> I love you, that's, Sam. That's Wake. DLC for 2020. They've teased an Alan Wake additional DLC pack. I'd, I'd buy the crap out of that. You might I do. Think, for me, the biggest part, the biggest pro for Control, I think, in a year that has had such, so many samey games, is that it just had so much personality. Mm. Like, the gameplay is great. The story... The implications of it anyway are really good, but for me it was just that, like you said, Ben Roy, the, the fingerprints of Remedy were all over mm. it in every single part of this game, and it was just a joy again to, to drink in live in this world and see what mad stuff, what mad music video they'd have behind oh my the God. next door. The thing that you said, it, it is, it's like a love letter to Remedy fans, but it's an encapsulation of everything that they've brought, that they're known for, all the iconic stuff. Like James McCaffrey, Max Payne, is the, like, there's one of the characters in this, the lead of the uh, the building. Alan Wake is in this. Poe to the Fall are a band that have been in all their past games and they have a new song that's in the game. And it's just like, if you're a Remedy fan, if you grew up playing Max Payne and those other things, like it is one giant love letter to everything that you like, respect and love about the studio. It's brilliant, but I didn't think that it had an ending, otherwise I would have Put it higher up. <laughs> oh. We'll see what's in the DLC. Um, number four is Outer Worlds. Oh, nice. Ooh, not Wilds, Worlds, Outer Worlds, Obsidian's Outer Worlds. Um, now, we've all played Outer Worlds. Um, this is something that I think excels in just in, base, in terms of how much responsiveness is in the world. What are you laughing at? I'm not laughing at anything. What are you laughing <laughs> at? Continue. I'm, I'm, in, I'm enjoying your point. Are you, though? Yes. The, um, the thing with that game, I think, is that everything that you do in that, uh, you know, the whole game responds to you in terms of different dialogue options and different paths you can take through it um, with a specific conclusion that you have to get to. That It seems like everything eventually comes back together um, but there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can get there what you what, what, what? nothing I'm just what? I'm just interested in what you guys see specifically in the outer worlds because mm -hmm. it made my top 10 but it was quite far down it was I know Ben Ray wasn't a fan either. something like that in, I was a fan in, I thought you left it down it was a, it was 11 but okay. this is a very good year like for a me. Fan. Well, this is it, because it's been <laughs> such a good year. And The Outer Worlds is like genuinely a great game. And if mm -hmm. you are interested in these kinds of RPGs or Obsidians of the work or Fallout, you should yeah. absolutely play it. But for me, it was just a very good one of those. Like, right. it didn't have that feature or element or story or character that really, you know, pushed it up into something special. Mm. For me, it was just... It was, it was a warm blanket. It was, it was just warm, like a nice, like, yeah. oh, a nice cup of, cup of cocoa. I remember Fallout. Let's play this. <laughs> yeah. It runs. Oh, that's good. And that's really good. And that was an enjoyable couple of weeks. And I loved some of the characters, Pavati, obviously. Yes. And I loved being in that world again. But there was nothing in there that elevated it to a, the next The thing level. is, like, it is another one of those, but I think that the way that they do it, like, obviously, like you said, the engine runs so much better. Like, the combat is so much snappier. You haven't got to worry about VATS, but you can slow everything down. So even that was just like, okay, they've perfected something that even Bethesda never got right. Um, as much as Fallout 4's, like, um, gun handling was a bit weightier, I'd Fallout 4, every other aspect of Fallout 4 fell apart for me. So, like, it was one of those cases of, like, okay, this is the vision that Bethesda and Obsidian have tried in the past, but, like, different elements have never, you know, managed to line up. So that was my first major thing. My other thing is just the, the character the memorability is the world the fact that they have this entire chunk of the galaxy taken up by capitalistic mentalities just run amok and like ideas that if you die then you know your closest living relative to take care of the body but it's the person that was closest to you that's a living relative therefore the whole village suffers or whatever just ways that the the galaxy is like you know they have this like capitalistic um 
I don't know, dictatorship, ruling everything. I will I will agree with that. The writing in this yeah, game the writing's is, is phenomenal. the best part. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's really funny. One thing I'll say about like the game itself, like the story is obviously fantastic and I love the characters, but I just loved how accessible the game was. Mm -hmm. It wasn't too like obnoxious, it wasn't it just it did what it did and it did it well and I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's a game you could enjoy for like an hour at a time kind mm -hmm. of thing yeah. without having to get like massively absorbed into mm -hmm. it. I thought it was really good. How did you guys play in terms of builds? Were you all out action focused or did you talk your way through? Uh, Pistol, I think. Nice. Small gun. <laughs> I was very. I Pills was type small gun. <laughs> engineer and um, char charisma. Yes. Based. Yeah, I was I talking put, my way through everything. Yes, that's right. I put so many points into dialogue, um, which lets you like sort of pop up at the bottom of the screen. It's like, hey, you can lie about this. You can. The, the, I really know. like how like literally it rewards you every time you level up. Like I love that. Mm. It's like, oh hey, you got like tons of points. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna put all these into charisma and, and stuff like that. <laughs> and lock picking. They have like a bunch yeah. of um, like uh, floors as well. Like you know, if you mm. if you are if you fall from a height too much, you can take another floor. You can accept that you might. Might not be good on your feet, but you can put more time. I put more points into other specific perks. I like that they thought of all that stuff. Like I say, for me, it's the, it's the perfection of something that I don't feel Bethesda have ever really nailed in, in terms of all the aspects of it. I will say towards the end, this game did get feel a bit like go talk to someone, mm. then go and get a bit of paper, then go through 17 more load screens. There's a lot it did of get a bit more towards the end, but for most of it, I cared about these characters a lot more than any other Fallout game. Mm -hmm. Like there was certain characters that I really wanted. There's certain characters to be happy and find someone they love and stuff. And now I cared, about, I cared more about that than anything else in the game. Uh -huh. And I just wanted Pavati and Ellie with me until what I, I felt like I had finished Pavati, Pavati's um, uh, run and then I got Vicar and he's like, I learned this in prison. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm just like, <laughs> the every time that cracks me up. Mm -hmm. But and in my head now, it's not about choice, it's about Space's choice. <laughs> oh no, it's not about Space's choice. Um, speaking of our choice though, number three was Sekiro. Three? Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is number three and you've only got yourselves to play. It's okay though, because we know it's actually number one. Well, do we though? Is it, is it this is the objective racial? factual list for all people. So, <sighs> you know, know whose fault this is, right? Yes, it is, Mr. B-Roy. Mr. B-Roy put it right at the bottom. Okay. If it was even on your list at all, uh, it did make it just made my top twenty. Gentlemen, top 20 allow me as well. to tell you why Sekiro is the game of the year. Three, it was number two I'll take it. Do you know what? Do you know what? Because I know what's above it, and those are also very good games. <laughs> you think you do? Sekiro. Was, <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, don't, don't you know. da, don't you dare! Oh, oh. We'll see. Sekiro was fantastic. Mm -hmm. It was. It took everything that obviously Dark Souls and Bloodborne did well. It took it one step further, and oh my God, did it make me feel some crazy feelings! <laughs> like, my whole thing with it was that obviously from software have made so many of these at this point that they know exactly how you know mm -hmm. twinned with modern technology and the amount of data that they must be pulling from each player that goes through this stuff. They know how to like make something that is just going to test your like like actual capabilities as a human being in terms of you need to have egg, like perfect response times for some of the to block some of the boss attacks um, or attacking. Really or block in rhythm and things like that. Yeah. It just it elevates the whole experience for me. For me, what like the actual combat itself, on top of being like so tight, like mm. there would be like moments where a spear would go past like my head by like that much and it doesn't hit you. It's yeah. so tight. Um, but it is the introduction of having like three main sort of counters, so you can mm. well block, deflect jump and well dodge there's four I suppose mm -hmm. and like it's deciding which one to do by actually watching the, the enemy watching the boss mm -hmm. that I thought was like Sekiro's biggest strength it's just like I it's, guess. it's like one giant ever expanding like spiral of rock paper scissors yeah, it's just okay, yeah. well this beats this beats this beats this yeah um, and you start like you start employing that and also it rewards you thinking outside the box taking a different route through a level and finding Stealthing the power up. And yeah you can totally stealth to power up and stuff and then maybe something you'll find will help you back when you're on the main path and just everything folds back in it's just it's so immaculately well designed I don't know if that's what you were going to say. I agree. I Good. agree. For me, the, the biggest thing I can say about um, Sekiro is that I love all the From Software games. And I loved Sekiro. But in the other games, I've sort of just kind of just gotten by. I've learned mm. the mechanics. I've learned to get good enough, but mm. I've never learned to get properly good. Whereas Sekiro forced me to yeah. properly learn yeah. like enemy movesets. I wasn't just kind of trying to dodge out the way because I kind of saw they were going to attack. Mm. I had to learn every moveset so I can parry it properly. And I thought that engaged me on a level that the other games obviously can engage people on, but hadn't done it so directly. Whereas mm. this was just like, no, you, you've got to learn this. Otherwise, you're just not going to progress. And <laughs> I wanted to progress because like, the game was lovely. Yeah, and once you get that stuff down, like, I mean, I've gone back to Bloodborne since then and just defeated, like, Father Gascoigne first time, and I'm, I'm in this, like, weird zen zone where everything feels like slow motion now because I'm in this, like, you know, Unagi-style Sekiro, like, you know, I can deflect everything coming in, it's completely fine. Um, but yeah, Sekiro just seems to be, like, the apex of everything that they've been building towards for, like, ten years now. I just wish it was more Tenchu. Well, you're wrong. Number two... <laughs> 
It's Death Stranding. <gasps> I know. Oh. Let's talk about this before we go on to number wow. one. Number two is Death Stranding, um, which was a lot of people. Well, it was both you guys' number one. It was my number two. Um, but I think yeah, it was my number three. Yes. Yeah. You just wait. But um, yeah, the whole thing with Death Stranding, obviously massively ambitious game. The first thing from Kojima, um, you know, since Zone of the Enders, first original IP that wasn't PT in terms of a full game. Um, and it just doesn't hold anything back. There's not a single idea that he had in the last 30 years that isn't in this game. It's ludicrous. Um, although I think that the biggest takeaway positive is the idea of rebuilding America as a team. Like everybody, um, you know, when you when you go through the story, you th see things popping up, whether it's roads or zip lines or like trucks and bikes and things like that. It feels like everyone is working together, which only um, enhances the story overall and then where that story goes in time. What do you guys think of this game? Story? Sorry, I'm going to jump in at it. Do it. This Go. game isn't just about like, it doesn't feel like a traditional game, which I think I've said a few times now. It's like, this isn't just about your own goal. This is about helping everyone across mm -hmm. America and not in just the way that you like, oh, everyone must cross America because we must link the car network. <laughs> but because everyone else, he does say that. People, <laughs> people's stuff is popping up into your game uh -huh. and your stuff is popping up into other people's games. And when you build that first road, like out in Lake Not Sea, and you get start getting people are liking. Like, yeah. Thank you. Someone like some of you use my road. Some of you use my road. Oh, some of you use my road. Some of you use my watchtower. Mm -hmm. Some of you use this ladder that I put here when I was almost dead. Yes. And I climbed up, and then I found a, a rope. I was like, I don't. I found a rope on a, a mountainside, and I was so happy because I was dead. <laughs> I was I the, the 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 time snow was coming down. It was ruining the mm -hmm. bomb on my back. Good. And I, I thought I was going to be destroyed. Heck! <laughs> it was very stressful because I was like, I'm not going to go for the BTs. I'm going to go over the mountains. Mm -hmm. Worst mistake. But it always requires way more items than you think you have. And then all the weird Kojima stuff. And I'm going to say this again. The Die Hardman is the best character performance I've seen in video games for a long yeah. time, Ooh. if ever. So if you get to the you, point, you're you're still still I guess he gets yeah. a bigger yeah. part. He's, I'm only yeah. at chapter five. Mm -hmm. you just, there's a lot more heart to him than just quest giver. Yeah, there's a, there's a whole bunch that they do with the characters towards the back half. That's when it kind of becomes more of a Metal Gear style Kojima game where it's like cutscene, cutscene, cutscene. Okay. Um, but overall, I think the biggest positive for Stranding, because for me, I don't think the script is any, I think the script's pretty bad. It's so, like, so cheesy, but yeah. like, I love chatting about this game because I can't, I, st I still haven't decided 20 hours in and loving it the whole way. Uh -huh. Whether it's good or bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think it does a whole bunch of like really good things, like the communal building stuff. I love the fact that he took things like fetch quest and over encumbrance and made like addictive, enjoyable arcadey mechanics out of it. Um, it is weird because you are spending so long just balancing and climbing and things like that. But like Ben Roy said, like I mean, I had a moment where I was stuck in a whole uh, field of BTs. I was down and like I had no health left, um, and I just happened to look up and someone had built a zip line on the top of the next mountain, and I was just in the range of it. So I just I bust, busted out my creative thing, built a zip line on my my own. Yeah. And whipped all the way out of there and I was like yep this is brilliant Those are the it's for the moments like that that make it so good man like for me this was my number one and uh, I think there are games that have been on this list that might be more you know cohesive or certainly more consistent left, in how you know how how, qual how quality the experience mm -hmm. is overall yeah. but for me like I said with the outer world it I, I don't look for sort of, you know, something just being solid all the way through. I want it to sort of reach for the stars and occasionally mm. hit it. And if it's sometimes if it falls flat a little bit, that's fine because at least it's doing something more. It's striving to be more. And for me, Death Stranding was that. And mm -hmm. it sort of captured my imagination in a way that a game hasn't for so long. And I just didn't want to stop playing it. And I just constantly was thinking about it, even the bad parts. And I yeah. think if something, if a work of art can do that to a person, that must mean it's something special. Yeah, the, the actual the rollout of new mechanics, the way like it's the most surprising game I've had all generation. You just you don't know what's next in the best way possible, and it just keeps getting better. They only ever give you more things to play with and more ways to get through the world, and it's brilliant. Um, which we'll do more stuff on this as well. We have a whole bunch of podcasts coming up, so we'll do a, another podcast on Death Stranding, and then we can talk about it way more. Because number one, in case you haven't already guessed, is from Resident, Resident Evil, Evil 2, Two <laughs> the remake, um, which is clearly a bar-setting exemplary example of how to do a remake in terms of, you know, reapproaching something that everybody already loved. You've kind of got this template that you could have just reskinned and gone with, um, but they didn't. They kind of went down the RE4 route and put the camera over your shoulder and gave you this amazing, like you said, the RE engine that the Capcom is using now. But they let you now. shoot while walking. Yes, you can shoot while walking. You can check out this really good map. What? I, I'm just, I'm, I'm looking at this list. Untitled this game at number nine, up Josh. And down, and I just, I just, I just can't see Days Gone. Like, <laughs> where? That well, should think, be number one. I think only you voted for Days Gone out of literally everybody, so it didn't really. I, I voted for Days yeah. Gone, and I spent at least 40 hours playing that <laughs> game. Know. 
the, I got the platinum in that game. The, well, the, the brass tacks <laughs> fact with Days Gone is that that game was so middling that you gave up gaming for about two months. <laughs> so don't give me that. You literally took a sabbatical from video games. Fair enough, which I didn't with Resident Evil 2 because exactly. it is a oh, bloody good, man. bloody scary, excellent game and a perfect Resident Evil game in my opinion. Yes, and I think if, if we're talking about this ranking being a, um, you know, a, a uh, being an example of how much we all like and this, uh, everything that we played, uh, being a representation of everything that we played. Resident Evil 2 is the one thing that all of us took away and came back going, oh my god, this game. I feel like I was going to be the only one shouting on the hill for Resident Evil <laughs> at the beginning of the year. When everyone started playing, I was like, oh, it's not just me that likes this game. And oh, it was so terrifying with Mr. X. And wait a minute, this is Resident Evil going forward. Because I thought 7 was the future of Resident Evil. And then we mm. get Resident Evil 2 remake and yeah. you're just like, this is just perfect survival horror. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is a brilliant example of how they could go forward in two completely different ways. Yeah. And I feel like that for one franchise is amazing. That's incredible mm. to have those doors both open. Uh, doors, get it right. Hey. <laughs> uh, the best thing that Resi 2 did for me was to offer a free demo. Um, <laughs> not a lot of games. You're laughing, but... No, you're right, though. That is what made me buy that game, mm -hmm. take the chance, because I'd only ever played 7, loved it, and then thought, oh, well, I won't like 2. It's different. It's too old. Um, but no, played that demo, loved it, and then um, I, I remember thinking back in January, this is like, Game of the Year material. That's yeah. like, yeah. That's the thing because it's like as much as Death Stranding is original and something like DMC Five is like proficient and Outer Worlds is you know extremely responsive and open world and everything. Um, what RE Two does, it's just it's just pitch perfect from front to back. And although it is another like RE Four style horror game, like it's just the, the gore effects and the exploration, the puzzle based stuff, the items that you need to get, everything in there is just so carefully placed. Um, and you'd be you'd struggle to find a flaw with it. It's a great length as well. It's a yeah. good like package. It doesn't go on too long. And it started the year off so well, and like you can go back to it and go and play through all the little bits you need to do you can go through and do it in less than like 14,000 steps or something stupid what's, your, uh, what's, what's your speed run uh, record I think like because I got the unlimited rocket launcher so I did it nice. in like 20 minutes half I'm sure an hour. Jules did it in about like 20 minutes yeah because well. Jules soon, lived on that soon, game. as soon as you get that rocket launcher and as soon as you've done everything you're just like you're all dead <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that is our number one uh, Resident Evil 2. We will have a whole bunch of podcasts coming where we'll dissect stuff for full big chunks, game by game. But for now, this is the rundown of What Culture Gaming's Game of the Year for 2019. I have been your host, Scott Tilford, joined by Rachel Howie. Thanks for listening. And Ben Roy Turner. Resident Evil. And Josh Brown. <laughs> Thank you and goodbye. <laughs> we'll catch you next time. Untitled Goose Game. Bye. Gears 5. Sakito. <laughs>